Hi, I'm Wyatt. And I'm Grace. And you're listening to Our Dad and your host of the Vacation Rental Revolution podcast. What's up guys, I'm coming to you from beautiful St. George, Utah. You can see all the red rocks here behind me. I decided to do a little shoot outside and enjoy the, uh, enjoy the beauty down here. We're down here looking at some lifestyle assets, some long-term or short-term vacation rentals for some of our clients. It's during the Parade of Homes, so we, we thought we'd come down here and take a little road trip, and I thought I'd come to you from the, the red rocks of St. George. So, hope you enjoy the uh, backdrop. I sure enjoy it out here. And we're, today's topic, we're going to talk to you about why I believe cash flow is not king when you're investing in lifestyle assets. I'm not saying cash flow is not important, and I know this is different than what probably every book you've read and a lot of the, a lot of the beginning investing type of uh, conversations that many people have. I have so many people come to me and they ask me what cap rates are on properties, what kind of cash flow it's going to generate, and I'm here to tell you that my opinion is that is not where you should start when you're investing in lifestyle assets or frankly any long-term investment for that matter and I'm going to explain to you why. So a lot of times people come to us and and tell us that they want a specific cash flow and cash flow absolutely is important. It's something that we look at. It's one of the it's one of the factors that we consider, but the number one factor that we consider and that I believe is the most important and the reason we invest early and for the long haul in real estate is to build our net worth. Our net worth is by far, in my opinion, the most important thing that we can focus on to build wealth long term. Now, I consider I have people come to me sometimes and just say, hey, Sean, I want a property. Here's my budget. I want it to have at least a 10% cap rate. 7% cap rate for example and they leave it at that and the reason why they start there is because they believe okay what cash flow do I really need to make this make sense I want to know what my ROI is which is all great but the properties with the highest cap rates and the highest cash flows are typically going to be misleading because they're going to be the riskier properties. They're going to be properties in not as nice of areas. They're going to be properties that are run down. They need more maintenance. There's a reason why they cash flow more than other properties and more than more than the nicer properties in the nicer areas. Some of our best investments for ourselves and for our clients have been properties that we pay top dollar for that are in the great areas we pay a premium for them because long term we have less maintenance the vacancy rates are way lower our occupancy is way higher people enjoy those properties people use them sure we paid a premium for them today but they're in areas that are going to appreciate more than lower quality less desirable areas so as as we consider these uh, lifestyle assets and we consider building that portfolio I don't want you to get stuck and hung up it's one of the biggest mistakes that people make is to just focus on cash flow and and please understand like I said I'm not saying that cash flow is not important cash flow is absolutely important but when you're investing for the long haul, there's a lot more factors and many other factors that you have to consider above and beyond cash flow. And the, the number one factor that we're going to consider is first to see if that asset fits into your lifestyle, to see if that asset is going to build long-term wealth for you, add significantly to your net worth. and. Paying a premium today and breaking even or having even sometimes a small negative cash flow makes a lot more sense than buying those properties that are in less desirable areas that might be cheaper to acquire, but they're going to be less desirable, they're going to be way more maintenance, they're going to be bigger headaches to own, and they might not make the best long-term place for you. So consider one of the mistakes that a lot of beginning investors make and a lot of people make specifically on lifestyle assets is what is the cash flow and while that's important it's not the number one thing that we ask for it, it's uh, I, I give an example of when um, when I bought my first properties I told you a story about when I Teresa and I started off buying our um, investment properties back in the day and we started buying the, the all the books I read said cash flow is king cash flow is king cash flow is king look for the highest cash flow and we ended up buying 21 properties and I focused strictly on cash flow and one of our properties was a fourplex and at the time it was it was cash flowing about uh, eight to eight to eight hundred to a thousand dollars a month I think it was um, each of the units was over two hundred dollars a month positive cash flow when we bought it I thought holy crap I just this is an awesome property if I could just buy a few more of these properties it'd be awesome the problem with that property is it was it was not in a very good neighborhood we had really really high turnover 
I ended up having a roof go bad on me. I had to replace a roof one year. All of the plumbing in the property went out. We flooded out an entire basement. The maintenance on this property was through the roof. So while it had a positive cash flow in terms of the mortgage and on paper, it showed this high cash flow, it was a nightmare to own. We constantly had vacancies. We constantly had repair bills and I was is so quick to try to sell that property because all I focused on when I bought it was the cash flow. And sure, it looked good on paper. Sure, it looked good on um, with with the cash flow and then the cap rate was higher than any of my other properties. Yet it was one of the worst properties that I ever bought. And we at the same time, just by accident, not by not by any planning at the time, but at the same time we found a couple properties that were really nice properties in nicer areas and purchased a couple of those properties. At the time I wasn't very excited about them because they didn't cash flow very much. I think I made about 50 bucks a month on these two particular houses that I'm thinking about and they were in really nice areas. And we ended up having those those two houses were the last two that we ended up selling. We made the most amount of money appreciation wise on them and we enjoyed owning them because they were they were hands free. They were we didn't have to worry about them. And while these are regular typical um, investment properties that we that we ended up uh, purchasing and they weren't uh, necessarily the vacation homes, the same goes true for the short term vacation rentals. You want to buy properties and and I always I'm a huge believer in buying those properties that are in the best areas that you can afford in the best resorts that you can afford and make they they may not make a ton of money right off the bat long term they're going to add significantly to your net worth they're going to add significantly to your portfolio and and that's the end game and when you own nice properties in nice areas they appreciate faster they appreciate for more than properties that are in less desirable areas so just keep that in mind as we go through this process together there's going to be many many more things that we consider but i don't want you to just to focus on cash flow you know i don't want you to say okay i have to have a property that gives me a seven percent cap cap rate a 7% cap rate is awesome and it might make sense to buy that property but it might also not make sense because we're not looking at all the other factors and the number one factor is is this property going to add significantly to your net worth and that's going to be determined by a lot more than just the cap rate so today enjoy i hope you enjoy the the backdrop as much as i enjoy being out here we're going to head back up to uh, salt lake we're going to go look at some ski property up in park city in a couple days um, i'll try to get outside bring you out there instead of uh, sitting in the office for the next couple episodes but until then i appreciate you joining us stick around for the next episodes we're really going to start diving into financing and management of these properties and lifestyle assets and where you find the best financing um, who who the best type of management companies are that we can go look for as we go through this quick start guide thanks again for joining us and until next time enjoy peace i'm out thanks for joining us on this episode of the vacation rental revolution podcast Share this with other people you think need to hear about it. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. Hey Grace, is there a website? Yes! For more amazing content and expert advice, visit bodicey.com. Thanks for listening and we'll see you on the next episode.